I want to talk about something different today, my new uh, Powermatic 14-inch bandsaw that I got here about a month ago. Uh, I hadn't really needed one, I thought, up until I got it, and it just kind of sat around until I started using it. And then once I started uh, laying out the uh, interior panels and the little bulkheads on the seats, uh, things that were taking me uh, you know, an hour or more took about five minutes. So uh, I've got to say, I love talk about now is the riser block. I got the riser block kit. It comes in a nice box. All the weights at one end, so I want to do this on it. Okay, part of the new kit, you get a, the longer version of the, of the guide support rod. You get the new longer bolt. You get a longer guide, which actually has a slot in it. It's a two-piece to slide up and down. And you get a new blade guard that goes on the, uh, the left-hand side. I went ahead and took everything off, even on the back. It didn't say to do so. On the back it didn't say to do anything, but I went ahead and removed the threaded screw here. Uh, there's a little uh, square plate and your little red washer in there for to let you know the, the tension. That just all screws out and it just keep them aside and it goes back in easily. The other thing is they don't go into it really well is when you're changing this rod out they say to push the old one out with the new one and hopefully the ball bearing doesn't come out. Well when I took the part ahead of time the ball bearing came out but that's no big thing I found it put it away. But there was a spring inside. So go ahead pull the pull the bolt this or the knob out. You got an Allen wrench in here or an Allen screw that's flush. Mine was flush, I imagine all of them are flush. Just you get a wrench that comes with a system that fits this. Back it out, take a wire, pull it out, and you already got the ball. Just set them aside and you'll put those in later when you assemble it. The other thing I want to let you know, you're putting the long bolt in over here. It doesn't really want to go in in place. So what you have to do is, while it's all off in pieces, put the lower block guide or the riser block with the up arrow in the back pointed up, put it in place first, put the bolt through, and then you got to do a little dance with the um, air hose in there in order to get them around. You want to put the air hose into the back side of it. Stick that in and then guide it down as you lower the block down. Or if I had a block and tackle to hold mine and I'll lower it down and get the bolt to come through. You can't put it in unless you move all the electrics and then this one's got the lamp on it so it becomes problematic. You've got to take everything apart. So as long as you remember, put the bolt in all the way hanging down and then just drop it down through the block to the bottom and then tighten it up. The other little thing that they don't tell you is that these bolts here are, I believe, they measure out at about 23 millimeters. There is enough room in here when the wires are pulled up out of the way that you can get in and work one on the top and then pull the bottom and then reverse them and then you can work them around and get full tension. So that was okay. I got all the, uh, the new rod in place. But the problem that I found was they have two great big paragraphs talking about what to do in case you lose the ball and the spring in here, but they don't tell you diddly about how to line this lower bearing guide up with the new post. If you look at the post, neither one of them, the old one or the new one, has any kind of flat spots in reference, or in reference to the, the V that they use to keep it from twisting that the ball rides in. I looked at the uh, the jet is the same way. Now the Grizzly down here has a flat spot all the way up and down in relation to the V group. The thing that I couldn't figure out, and this is really important, is you've got to get this upper guide lined up with the machine and the blade so the upper guide is in line with the lower guide. Okay, what I was able to figure out was I would take a sliding square, because I'm assuming the miter gauge slot is hopefully true to the rest of the machine, that it's true to the trunnions, the trunnion guide is plate is true to the uh, axis of the blade wheels. So what I did was I set my adjustable guide in the groove up next to it. I supported the blade with a quarter inch piece of plywood and then I lowered the, the rod up and down until 
it's down near the bottom, a little off, and then I worked this screw, this bolt right here, loosened it, tightened it down finger tight until I got it rocking back and forth to where I could bring in this uh, stray edge or 90 adjustable guide to where both bearings were even on the straight edge. So that was the only thing that I could figure out that would work and it seems to be true because when I went to adjust the blades after I got the, or adjust the guides after I had the blade in, everything lined up true. Uh, there was no pinching, there wasn't any uh, eagle beaking uh, twist on one side between the upper and the lower bearing carrier. So uh, that seemed to work. I just wish they would have had a flat spot in here or some explanation in the, uh, the uh, plans of how to, to uh, figure it out. But now it's figured out and it's all done and I hope some of this stuff uh, means something to you and give you at least some heads up on what you're looking for. Now the one thing I did find when I started out and I had the table and everything off and I had a big long, I had a five foot straight on, on the wheels the wheels before I started were tracking perfectly. The blade that I had in there tracked evenly top and bottom. There was no closer on one edge or farther back on the other side. It tracked true all the way around on both wheels. So when I measured it I found that with all the tension off and everything the top half of the wheel was still a little bit back. I don't know if this was in, in, to help induce some some twist when the blade is uh, putting all that tension on it that everything axes around and is in line again. Because uh, you have to remember that this upper bearing guide is floating in that back plate and that just slides up and down those tracks in the back. So I didn't check it after I put the riser block in. I know there's a lot of information on the internet about guys complaining that they couldn't get the block set up. I don't know if this uh, is true now. I may hopefully they've changed it on the new ones. I had no problem but I didn't check it to see what had happened. But the blade when I put in the new 105 inch blade and got everything guided up or you know in line and adjusted uh, it tracked perfect. It tracks evenly top and bottom uh, same amount back and forth on each side so whatever it is now I don't care. It, it tracks true. My next uh, moment of truth will be when I get my Carter stabilizer guide because I want to start using 8 inch blades on this for scroll saw work. Uh, the blade I got in here now is just a little too wide for cutting the delicate stuff and I will get into a, a YouTube video on that when I get it and get it all set up. It's a pretty slick little thing and I can't wait to get it so a little change of pace from building boats. Talk to you later. Bye bye.